first meeting of the Mount Perry Rock's very second annual year, I guess. No. Yeah. 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 And uh, I will now take nominations for the board chair position. <laughs> I nominate Jim Murphy. I'll second. I'll, I'll, any discussion about that? Jim, thank you so much. You're doing a great job. Get <laughs> yeah. you know. Thank you. I feel like we had this discussion last time, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have made enough praise on Jim. <laughs> All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 I hereby anoint Jim as <laughs> <laughs> the board chair. Well, thank you all, and congratulations to Andrew, and congratulations to Steve on the And Lisa. And Lisa. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. You didn't listen to. Mm -hmm. High five. Are you running did you, did you get sworn in? Are you official? No. Didn't get the information in time. I'm official. I could have done my official. homework, okay. but. <clears throat> um, I don't think we're going to have any close votes. That... Yeah. 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 I'm not allowed to vote. Huh? For next week, next time. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, um, I think Steve's still in New Mexico, so he's probably talking. We do have. He can do it by phone, though. Huh? You can do it by phone. I don't know if you have to be in Vermont or not, but I had, I did have to rate, I did it by phone because I was going to walk over. And I was told I can do it by phone, but I did need to raise my right hand in the air and double check to make sure that my right hand was raised. Did you like face John said that, John said he doesn't have to do it. He's like, we can actually do it over the phone, but you just need to raise your right hand. Okay, it's like really, it better be raised right now. And it doesn't have to be John Odom that does it. He told me it could be. Um, I think justice of the peace. Justice. This is all good information for us for next year. Has um, to be recorded though. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Excellent. You have, you have to sign a book too. He signed it. Okay. Great. So we're a little short staff. Does that mean? There's there are enough. Five of six of us. Yeah. yeah. Four. I'm wondering, can we elect Lisa Clerk? Probably not until she's officially sworn in. Well, let's let's do it twice. Okay. There you go. Um. So we do first election of officers, or mm -hmm. let's do it and then public comment. Um. And uh, we, have, we have one member of the public. Um. So uh, nominations for vice chair. I nominate Bridget if she wants to do it again. Sure. And I'll second that. <laughs> Any discussion? Thank, Thank you, Bridget. Bridget. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you. I might not want to say any time. One more year. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, Parliamentarian. Sure. I'll nominate Ryan. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah, what is the parliamentarian? <laughs> he has Robert's rules in his back pocket. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. It's supposed right. to Definitely. tell us so, if we go astray. Yeah, yeah. If the board chair has any questions about how to proceed with things, we can talk about things before the meeting, and it's just a general making sure that we are following process. Yes. Great. Perfect. Thank you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And clerk. Is that currently Becky? That's me. Lisa. 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 Okay. Becky was treasurer before. We don't have one. I will nominate Lisa for clerk. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. <laughs> Thank you. Or well, at least we'll. <laughs> We just want to ask Pietro quickly if, if we need to do it again. It takes um, 30 seconds to do it again, too. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which is cheaper. Pietro has 30 seconds. So in the, on the ballot, there was a place for moderator, and there wasn't anyone. And previously, we had Paul Giuliani, and all I recall him doing is what Libby just did, yeah. call the meeting to order and cause the election of the chair. Is there any other job for the moderator? Yeah, thanks for calling my attention because I noticed that too and I was going to bring it up and then I, I forgot about it. Do we have a problem that we do not have a moderator? Although I, I 
I think it's a statutory requirement. I think we have to have it by statute. It's only if we are able to have a district meeting, we would have to have the moderator. But I don't think there's really any reason that we would need to have a district meeting. Well, I wonder if you should clarify with John whether we have a moderator. Jim, Andrew wrote somebody in. I wrote somebody in. <laughs> so we should see. We might have written in the we same We might person. have a moderator. Yeah. So, oh, you guys. You know, so we should, check, cool. we should check in. We should check in with. Uh, Say, hey, she did my job. We should you check in with the Montpelier clerk's <laughs> office. Yeah. Right. I think there's a minimum like, number of You have to have the, the number of petitions. Yeah. It's, it's, would, yeah. would two votes be enough? If, no. <laughs> no. That's in a coordinated like, campaign. I the number that you have to have to be on the petition yourself to be on the ballot. Probably. You have to have that threshold. What is that? So you have to have so 20 20 right. 30 So when you had to get a certain now. number of petitions yeah. to get on the ballot, it's that same number to be written in. So my, my uh, guess is there is isn't. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think we yeah. don't have a lot. 30 of your best friends didn't do the same thing you did. <laughs> no. That might be a question for Pietro. Yeah. Whether Heather, we, do you know? Whether we need a moderator and if we. And to have our act together to ensure that we don't find ourselves in this embarrassing pickle yeah. next year. Yeah. So I know we'll I just appoint somebody. It's not, it's not the most yeah, now you can appoint. No, of all the jobs to not have somebody, right? The lottery is probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jim, we've been through several consecutive dumpster fires. That does not. <laughs> I didn't use that language at all. Yeah, this is this is low on the list of, of embarrassing pickles. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, so I will reach out to Pietro and find out, and then we can we can appoint someone with a member of the public. I think that's all the positions you do not have. We have a treasurer elected by, um, and we did have a candidate there. Um, I think we're done. Thank you Thank all, you and welcome new old members. I was going to say, Jim, huh? do we need to appoint members to the standing committees? Well, that's a good question. We probably do. I hadn't thought about that until we started this process, but I think we're supposed to appoint members to the standing committees. So the budget committee, uh, finance. The finance, policy, and superintendent evaluation committees. And negotiations. That is I think good. we're supposed to good point of order, parliamentary. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, we had said even uh, we weren't, so there's five? if we weren't in negotiations, it didn't do anything. So, but it is a standing because we would always have at some point in time. So which do we have? I have budget, budget, no, budget, budget finance. No, budget finance is one. Budget it? finance, yeah. Negotiation, policy, superintendent evaluation. Are we going to make the policy committee permanently? I said that. Or? I'm sorry. That's okay. Or maybe we, I didn't say it. But we yeah. had a transportation committee, but I don't think Are we need to reappoint the transportation committee. I think we had said we, we would because there would be revisions committee. and monitoring, and I think it's a good idea. In we the future, it wouldn't be as intense as it is right now. But the goal would be that the policy committee would, if nothing else, just be doing some record keeping and, should we say, weeding and refreshing. As a point of process, are we able to do a blanket? Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, pr pr proposal of reappointing all of the same members People. who were on those committees to them in one vote. That sounds I like believe so. I like as long as everybody like knows I, what we're voting on, yes. yes. <clears throat> yeah. So I motion that we reappoint all of the members who were on the standing committees prior to town meeting day to those same committees mm -hmm. post town meeting day. So I second, but can I make a discussion point? Sure. The reason it popped into my mind is because when we were talking about the superintendent evaluation committee at our last meeting, we had talked about we did Tina. Have Tina. So she's on. Okay. So that is, yes, we're all clear then. Yeah. So she's included in this vote. In the superintendent okay. evaluation committee. So we have a second? I do. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. I think we are reorganized. And Libby and I will make a note to just reappoint the clerk. Um, in order for me to reappoint the. Maybe we can just do
do a full blanket motion reappointing Lisa to everything she's been appointed to? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> she's on some committees too. I think you can appoint her. She just can't talk, <laughs> or yeah. she can't vote she on can't anything. Vote. Yeah. Well, we'll just we'll just do a a blanket one. Then. My guess is that it won't get um, called into too much question. Um, so public comment. Great. Um, so uh, the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve I, the consent agenda? Actually, Jim, can we, we just it? can we just pull the bond capital plan bid? Um, yep. Just for the sake of getting an overview on the scope, and I don't anticipate that will take uh, yeah. very long. But I think it would be helpful. Um, yeah, I don't know if. I defer to you, but maybe just pull that in after the learning focus right there, since we'll be here, so that that can be a little time. Yeah. That's, so that's my motion, is to pull that. So, consent agenda with that, that item, uh, hold out, table, or mm -hmm. I move that we approve the consent agenda with the exception of the approval of bond and capital plan bid. I Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and then Andrew, you want to, um, is the other Andrew probably the best person to answer that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want to? Sure. sure. Um, so the first thing we can go over is uh, the actual approval of the bids. So we uh, had three bidders, uh, Spates Construction, Russell Construction, and EF Wall. Uh, you'll notice that we have pretty good bid results, pretty tight, uh, which is always encouraging on a set of drawings. You'll also notice um, that the, we did not go with the low bidder. We went, because we were within 1% of bid results, we had by statute the ability to pick uh, between two contractors. In the end, we went with uh, EF wall for one primary reason in that as we when we put together the bid documents we had the base bid scope which we'll go over and then we had alternates they were fundamentally add alternates we had a couple of delete alternates that were kind of a uh, doomsday if the bids were way over budget we could at least take that deduct get the project rolling and kind of figure things out we didn't want to be um, in the position we were with the playground last year, trying to figure out things on the fly, waste, wasting time, eating up time. Um, but fortunately, the bids came in. We were able; they were under our target budget. <clears throat> and when we put those ads back in, which I'll discuss in a moment, there's also not only the, the the cost of those ads, but schedule. And EF Wall was able to accommodate all our ads without adding any time to our schedule. Our schedule is such that uh, we will begin, haven't had this conversation with the contractor specifically yet, but the, the bid documents and the expectation is that April break, we're actually going to start ripping and tearing here at the high school, uh, working down at the auditorium and one of the locker rooms. Up, work uh, through to the start of school and the target is to have substantial completion by the start of school here at the high school. So. Uh, again, we were within that 1%. It was the schedule that, that tipped us towards EF wall. So that was our recommendation that we go with EF wall. <clears throat> Sorry, how can we start the auditorium work for all state? Yes. There, there is a plan that any performances that would take place, they've all been adjusted with uh, Kiana and other folks who usually traditionally you will use the auditorium in the spring. We've either moved the schedule up to before April break or moved them down to UES to do performances down there for other accommodations. We have taken a former storage room and made a temporary locker room um, here at, at the high school. So that's how we're going to be able to take out one of the locker rooms. And again, that's our planning on paper. Once we sit down with the contractor, we'll have better, they'll have better suggestions as to how we attack this. And what's the time frame to actually get it done? Again, substantial completion by the start of school. Um, I 
can guarantee you that we're not going to turn the key on the start of school and there's not going to be a contractor wandering through. But the goal is that we can use locker rooms as locker rooms. We can use weight rooms as weight rooms. Um, I can guarantee you that they're not going to be, you know, we're not, they're going to leave here on the third week of August and we're not going to see another contractor here. We will. But use the spaces as intended. Okay. That's the goal. Great. So with regards to this, any questions on the bid? Bid results and why we ended up where we did? So that was our recommendation on that. With regards to the uh, scoping of the projects, um, let's start at UES. Uh, UES, we uh, were very fortunate. On all of our projects, we've kept about a 10% contingency on construction. We were fortunate at UES that through all the demo, which is always the scariest part of construction, uh, we didn't run into any big issues out there. So we still have a pretty good chunk of contingency left to be uh, spent out there. We're more comfortable about saying, okay, we can actually afford to do some of these things that we pulled back uh, to get that bid in line. Uh, right now, uh, our landscape architect, SE Group, is working with ECI on putting features back into the playground. In another few weeks, we will have a better plan that we can actually, I've got some plans in my office, but I don't want to show them to you until we know, yes, we can afford that, yes, we can afford that. But it's looking much more um, to the, to the um, <clears throat> someone who isn't been involved with the project intimately, it's going to look like what was promised, and that's the goal here. That, you know, we may have tweaked the thing here or there, but the amphitheater will be in the project, the, play, the lower playground will have equipment, and it will be closer to what um, the expectation is. As well as taking into account that we will have areas that if next year, if we aren't able to afford every piece of equipment that we want, that we'll have the space allocated that we can get that there and we can end up where we intended. Here at the high school, the general scope of uh, the project here at the high school is the auditorium, which includes improvements to the sound and lighting systems. We were able to afford, or I shouldn't say we, you, and the public was able to afford reupholstering of, or upholstering of all the seats, uh, refinishing the ceiling, windows, draperies, some, some curtains, so, and a new control board for the audio, audio at the back of the stage for sound and lights. So that was great. New public restrooms in the lobby of, by the gym. Um, a weight room, which is currently upstairs back behind the, the, uh, uh, the basketball court. It's now gonna be on the, on the ground floor for accessibility in the back corner with additional windows. So you can actually look outside and see whether it's raining or snowing or what with actually a window from the gym into the weight room so you can see people are in there and that you've got this great new feature. And then two new locker rooms with support space for uh, coaches and referees. We also have a new training room that'll be going in um, out on the back side of the basketball court. At Union, the interior work at the U at Union, we're finishing up the vestibule now. Down there, there's a new elevator that's going in, renovation of the last two gang bathrooms down there, and a new fire alarm system and um, electrical work, feeding from the panels to new sub-panels, um, which is gonna be a, a great asset down there. Also, we bundled into this, much to Grant's Grin was we uh, cross we cross the streams of funding we included in this bid number here uh, the work at, at the capital work at Main Street Middle School which includes two new restrooms gang restrooms down there on the uh, down by the gym and then up on the third floor again those are different funding but for the economies of bidding and we we bundled them into this bid and Grant will do his accounting work from there. Um, new, here at the high school, some mechanical work, air handlers, uh, a re, we're going to use the same system, silicone coating system we used on the roof membrane um, this summer here over on that, over the gym and auditorium here at the high school. The system seems to be working well. Um, Does that mean the whole roof is done now? It is. 
but it's a coating system. It's not a new membrane. So I, I, it was a system that was um, endorsed before I got here, and um, you know the, the best way would have been to strip it all down, all the insulation off, and put a whole new membrane and, and all that. Um, this coating system of existing membranes is something that's become in vogue uh, more widely acceptable in the last several years. This, the idea of taking a membrane that is generally in good shape to tear it all off, to landfill it, when you can actually roll on coatings that you use the existing as a substrate um, has, has gained popularity. Um, Northern New England and New England were generally the last to get on board with those types of things, but it's becoming more acceptable around here. So um, I do not get the expectation, I would not have the expectation that this is a 25, 20, 25 year roof. I think we've probably gotten 15 more years out of these roofs. That's my, that's my guess. Do you have any idea what the cost differential is, roughly? Oh, uh, <laughs> doing something like that versus that's a lot. It's yeah. probably four times as much, especially here where the roof deck we weren't able to fasten into it, so we truly would have had to take all the insulation off of our roofs and adhere the insulation because we can't we can't mechanically fasten it. So um, it was a huge savings. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but multiples of what a new system would cost. So. Uh, is there still going to be the new classroom space? That's part of this, um, the high school work, the new uh, classroom, the arts that's... Yeah, oh, yes, the, the green room. room. Yes, there's a new classroom <coughs> space, green room, green room, on the back side by the auditorium. So, uh, we're hoping, and again, this all, these numbers came in. Um, you know, we worked really hard uh, with the administration and the faculty who use these spaces and what their needs are, and... and we really worked together to focus in on what the most important things were and what the biggest bang for the buck was. And our hope is just like we did with the um, playground is we're gonna, be, we're gonna be conservative now such that when we get done, when we know we've got all those basics covered that we'll have a little bit of leeway to sort of add some things back in. Um, you know, I, I'll say I'd love to put a, few, a little bit of money into that lobby. I mean, people are gonna be coming in to, to spruce up that lobby for as modest as we can to really make the experience great from, we don't want to have people come in and then get into that lobby and then have to go to those nice spaces. But let's make sure we get those nice spaces the way we want before we start worrying about those things. And just so everyone knows, I participated, I represented the board on the auditorium committee and Lisa represented mm -hmm. us on the um, wellness gymnasium yeah. side of things. So if you have any more questions. Do you, yeah, you, what does the board think about, um, and it could be, it might even make sense to do it in the fall um, once these projects are done, but then we're going to have more capital projects. We created a capital fund to, to deal with. What do people think um, about a walkthrough of the Montpelier buildings one afternoon to look at the work that's been done and what's, because we're making decisions on on these things regularly, and although we're not making decisions based on the aesthetics and based on our anecdotal experiences, I think it is helpful to see it. And even those of us who do have kids in the schools, they're only in certain schools, so we don't see everything. I think it could be helpful to see, well, have Andrew walk us through and say, well, these are our needs here, here, and here. These are examples of them, and this is what we've done here, here, and here kind of thing. We, we did have a walkthrough of the high school stuff, and it was helpful. Yeah. 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 So it would be yeah. nice to have one after it's done. Libby and I have discussed this, and I, I'm, I was probably a little bit more ambitious than I, than I should have been, but I would like to, in the near future, whatever that means, um, I would like to give you guys an annual report on um, your facilities, where they stand, what they're, and, and in a format such that it's not reinventing the wheel every year, it's updating the information because um, so we could plan ahead. What a novel idea. Right. right. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Thank you for your work on this. But let's get the things built first. I'm slowly chipping away at it, but I don't want to make any promises quite yet until Libby tells me when to make that promise. Well, let me not talk about it. Maybe. But the walkthrough, I think, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, do you think maybe like. 
later in the spring when some stuff is um, happening. Whenever, whenever you guys would like to do it, happy to playground do. thaws and mm -hmm. or in the fall. Or in the fall when it's done. In the fall yeah. when it's well, done. Maybe both. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, we may yeah. have an opportunity in the fall to uh, make decisions about spare funds. <coughs> Timing-wise, none of this stuff is going away, right. so the issues aren't going to change. Uh, yeah. So the more time you have to think about them and trying to prioritize those those pieces. And having walked through with Andrew, it's a different. It's a different right. experience because he's so knowledgeable about right. buildings. So right. you see it through a different lens. And then Libby, Libby was went through went through with the fire marshal, uh, fire marshal chief, fire chief, and uh, police chief. No, it was not Matt. Not Tony, Tony, Tony didn't join us for that. But yeah, absolutely, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. <coughs> Great. We'll uh, we'll make sure that happens. Maybe even maybe we'll spring in the fall. Um, any further discussion on that, or can we have a motion to uh, approve. approve the bid approval? I move to approve the um, award of the contract to EF Wall. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have, and this will be Michelle. Uh, so, uh, Michelle and Andrew, to talk about land. Uh, just kind of note to the board, you might want to, and this is, um, there's a link to my work, I think you send this around on some social media. Um, yeah, it's from the website to show. Them. Yeah, so they can, you know, view this in case they want to the information on what they uh, have some, some questions that we don't have. So, um, what, we wanted to invite Michelle down, Thompson down here, and I'll let Michelle introduce herself, but go. Last time we talked, we kind of just gave an overview of where we were and kind of what we were trying to do. From there, we started to just develop a strategy to deal with uh, until the legislature comes up with uh, more specific that we, specifics that we can follow. We wanted to come up with a strategy that we could communicate with the public as to what we're doing to uh, reduce lead exposure to students. And we thought it would be a great idea to share this with you guys so, uh, as you were saying, you could, you could share it with the public. Um, and Michelle uh, could answer any specific questions that you had or general questions about where we are within <coughs> the states and the schools as well as what we're doing here. Um, so I'll let Michelle introduce herself. Sure. Um, so I'm Michelle Thompson. I'm the public health industrial hygienist with the health department. Um, and one of my capacities is um, environmental health work with schools. So I've, I've been um, helping here with the Montpelier Roxbury School District and, and their efforts to do the lead and drinking water testing. Um, and the radon testing. And radon testing, yeah. So, um, so as, <clears throat> Michelle, why don't you give a little sort of lead in drinking water and sort of where standards are and just to give us a context of um, where we are in the state and, and sort of in this flux from 15 parts per billion down to one to the now potentially three with the state to sort of. Sure. Um, so lead in drinking water is regulated in a couple different ways depending on um, your building and who served and how many students are served and whether it's a, a municipal water source or a well. Um, so schools that are on their own well and serve 25 or more people, they're required to do some lead testing as part of the lead and copper rule, um, which the Department of Environmental Conservation regulates. Um, and municipal water systems are required to do some testing for the same same rule but again it's just a portion of taps and um, schools that are on a municipal water system aren't being tested inside the school because the lead and copper rule requires testing at residences so they're doing um, the <coughs> testing at in residential settings and not inside the school building um, the action level that they use for those public water systems um, is 15 parts per billion. 
it's not a health-based level. It's based on um, treatment effectiveness and based on economic feasibility. Um, so that's, that's the level that they use. They require action to be taken um, for any taps that are above 15 parts per billion. The American Academy of Pediatric um, and the health department, we have a health advisory level of one part per billion. Um, so we would recommend that TAPS not exceed one part per billion, and that is a health protective value because there is no safe level of lead in the body, um, and so as low as, as you can get it is what's recommended. Um, and the reason it's not zero is because labs have different reporting limits, um, and the health department lab's reporting limit is one part per billion. So basically we're saying um, we recommend being as low as a lab is going to report to you. Um, they won't report anything less than one. So we, um, and stop me when, when you need to. So we, they, we got into this um, from a parent who had asked us about if we had done any lead testing and I said no. And, Asked Libby and said, "Let's do it." And uh, so we did. And uh, 150 test results later, um, and the the states coming out with their own soon uh, their own um, rules and regulations on this is probably within the next probably this count probably this year. That's the guess. They've got things written, but whether it's going to be implemented or not, because there's still a lot. So uh, we went through, and as I say, we've tested about 150, or taken about 150 tests. And in conversations with you and the public and Libby and myself, it, we, we came to the conclusion that barring having the state tell us, you know, giving us the guidance that, and talking with Michelle, that really our best bet is let's go to the one part per billion or less. And the best place to do that after doing our testing is direct people to filtered bottle stations, which we have throughout the buildings. And that's what we have done. Um, so every sink that potentially, every sink has a sign above it that says uh, one, of a, one of a couple of things. It says um, use bottle fill stations. That's in all the classrooms, all the classroom sinks, they have those signs. We, um, you know, they're signs, they're laminated signs. So we, I've talked to the custodial staff and said, hey, if you need more, if they're not there, make sure you let us know and we'll get them up. But trying to set a culture of sending the kids to the drinking fountains. Um, in kitchens, we have uh, either tested and know that they're down to the one part per billion or less. We've put a no restriction sign up. If we've got a fixture that is, um, a little higher at the at the initial draw, but is fine in the flush. We've got a purge for thirty seconds sign, or we've got a um, did I say the no restrictions? Mm -hmm. so the no restrictions or a purge. So that's where we are with the kitchens. In home ec rooms, we've put filters on all the home ec rooms, and the NSF. Is that what it is? Yes. NSF rated filters on all the taps figuring you're not going to take your pot of water down to the sink, down to the bubbler to get water. And we've done that for all the nurses' offices as well, um, except Roxbury, where it's, they tested it below the limit. Um, so um, that's generally where we are. What we've done is uh, we've come up with this sort of strategy. This is a work in progress, and until the state comes out with something a little more uh, specific, this is what we, we are doing as a district. So we're directing all, all students and, and faculty to use, and visitors to use the, the bottle fill stations. Uh, any pit fixture that's above 15 parts per billion, we immediately took out of service. I'm gonna go show you the numbers here in, this, in a moment. Any fixture that's redundant, an old unfiltered drinking fountain that's 10 feet away from a new bottle fill station, we've taken out of service. An old sink that's in a closet, and you'd be amazed at how many sinks there are in closets in this district. <laughs> um, we just shut the water off. 
Again, installed uh, filters at all the nurses' offices, installed filters at all the student cooking facilities. Um, in the kitchens, again, we have made sure that all those have the appropriate sign as to what they can use. Ideally, we'd like to have the kitchens, no restrictions. And we are working towards that. We have been, I'll talk a little bit about that, the sort of remediation uh, steps that we've been taking. Uh, post all sinks. Um, we're going to implement a strategy of any fixture that is tested above one part per billion that we've taken out of use for drinking. We are going to start replacing those fixtures and valves. Really, you got to go down. If, you, if the fixture had landed in it, which our testing kind of indicates that our our any fixture that is a problem, it's because of the fixture, not the pipes within the building. But we got to go down to the valves, which means we have to shut off the water in the building. Even in this building, that's a nerve-wracking thing to do. So we haven't done that at UES or Main Street because you don't mess with the plumbing when the kids are in there because the valves don't get exercised. You turn them once, we could have big trouble. So we're, we're being a little bit cautious there on those, but they're on the schedule at the appropriate time to, to replace those fixtures. We're going to continue testing as, as needed and work with Michelle. Uh, we're going to continue to communicate our strategy and our goals with parents. We've got a web page which I'm going to show you guys so you can communicate <coughs> out to folks um, where we're putting all this information so folks can find it. Um, and then the last piece is going to be, as I say, once the state comes up with their regulations, we will follow those at, as a minimum. The state, it appears, is going to have a three part per billion um, limit for drinking water. So uh, that will be a further discussion, but we're going to stick with the one for now. And um, the one piece that is a little bit um, that we talked with Michelle about was lead can't get through this. You can use it for washing dishes and washing your hands. Yep. And so we kind of early on made that compromise that we really, you got to have water. You got to, especially in the elementary schools, the kids need to be able to wash their hands. Uh, so that's why we decided, we made the conscious decision to leave those sinks active. And that's where the signage comes into play and yeah. just changing the, the culture around where people are used to drinking from. So if, if it gets in the teacher's mindset that, okay, we're not using this for drinking cooking, we're only using this for hand washing, and then that just becomes the, the norm. Yeah. And it's and it's being on the, the front edge here, it's scary that you know we're putting up signs telling our users that the water's poison. Well, it's, it's not necessarily. But <laughs> it's you know it's it's within the limits of what's allowable. Um, so I think after a year or two or a couple of years of doing this, it's gonna be it, we're not gonna be the only building. So any public building you go into is gonna have signage like that in it going to direct you to the drinking fountains. So, so what we've done with regard to any questions? Yeah. Sorry, um, you guys are doing amazing with this complex situation. Um, but my, what I wonder is that the public water supply only has to meet a 15 parts per billion standard. So how can we be held to a lower standard? If, if, do we know what the incoming water lead level is? I would say by our flush test, we, we kind of do. Um, your flush tests might be a little bit too short. Um, 30 seconds probably doesn't get you out the side of the building, but um, you could certainly check in with the water, whatever the water district is, and see what their, their results are showing. Um, when we did a pilot, last school year um, with 16 schools we did a 10 minute flush mm -hmm. just to answer that question um, and we didn't find any um, detection in any of those 10 minute flush samples they were all down less than one part they were all less than one yeah, well, that's yeah. Good. and and that maybe is not a good um, generalization good across the state right. but yeah. what we saw was that the water being supplied typically is Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's the, the fact that some of our taps are below one is a most, 
good that most are below one is a good indication of the quality of Montpelier's water, but I just think we need to bear in mind that we don't know the lead level of the incoming water, and it seems like a lot to ask to fix that problem if there is one. Is there any way for incoming water to shed lead, if you will, um, as it comes out? Most of our fountains, for example, are less than one part per billion. Is there any chance? Is there any way that the water supply coming in could be greater than that in terms of lead content? Typically, what happens is the water comes in and lead gets into the water through contact with the pipes and fixtures and solder. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually the water is acquiring lead as, as it flows moves right. through, well, not necessarily it drops. Sediment, you know, except at points where it drops sediment out of it. Yeah. Andrew, since the signage is so important, can we assume that all the signage is age appropriate in each of the buildings? They do have pictures, um, which was one of the things that the health department was pretty big on making sure was included in any signage because obviously if it's just um, words and it's in a, in a classroom where there's, you know, pre-K um, for young kids that that would be helpful. Um, so there's pictures of like a water bottle um, with the do not, you know, the no sign. The one sign I didn't bring. Um, I'll have to go, I can go get the one. I've got go one in the, the bathroom office. right over there. Bathroom across the hall? Yeah. There's one in the bathroom across the hall. Here, I'll get it. And there's okay. similar, similar ones. There's a water, water bottle. There's a cup. I used the one that you sent um, uh, yes, hand washing. <laughs> I, and I agree that one of the things I think we should do next year is we do need to go away. I, I think we should go away from the laminated sign. I think we need to get a plaque, uh, you know, something that's fastened to the fastened to the cabinets or the walls or something that we, we know is going to stay. Sure. But I wonder if we could color code some of the ones at the elementary school level. And that was certainly a concern that that, uh, that parents brought to us is, you know, you're asking, um, you know, the kids to make that decision of what's right and what's, you know, is this okay for me? Um, so absolutely. Actually, once they're accustomed to it, they'll follow the rules. So it's just, you know, this the time around, we need yeah. to, so the teachers need to say no. You fill up your water bottle there, and then they'll do it automatically. Yeah. I mean, in terms of actual uses, obviously we can't have yes. okay. really good data on this, but um, kind of anecdotally, it seems like the places where you're asking people to fill up water are probably the places where most of the drinking was occurring from prior to. Uh, it, are, were some of the sinks that had levels below one frequently used for drinking or consumption? Um, or? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. They were the biggest issue, and Michelle can um, speak to this in more detail. The biggest issues we had were the faucets that were put in, either in the late '80s, early '90s, yeah. when the lead logs were sort of coming in, but not quite hammer tight yet. Um, and it depends on the, t the type of fixture. Bubblers. So down at Roxbury, they had sinks that had bubblers on them, little side bubblers. Well, the way that's configured is the water sits in the bubbler and the packing is a little bit different. So the bubbler tested high, but the fixture didn't. So on the same sink, you get two different readings. Um, so right now, the, 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 the highest priority will be, and once we can get control of the building, and I, and I would love to be able to say, hey, we can do this tomorrow, but we can't mess with the water. We shouldn't mess with the water system down UES in the middle of the winter. Um, UES, there's about four, four sinks at UES that were part of the later edition, part of that 90, late 80s, 90 edition. Um, there's one sink at Roxbury, and again, you can't really tell because the sinks at Roxbury were all installed basically at the same time, and four out of five of them are perfectly, are within the limits, and there's one that's not. Why that one isn't, who knows. Um, but we've been able to identify it. So on the district web, sorry. Well, no, I was just going to say, it's a recent thing, water bottles. So before that, we had drinking fountains. People went to drinking mm -hmm. fountains. 
when water bottles came in, then you, s s you know, stuck them under any faucet that worked. There was a change, and that's been re relatively recent. Yeah. Um, what is your plan for retesting to check? Perfect. So on the district web page, if you go to the, if, if folks, you can direct folks who have questions, the, the, the central office page under facilities, we have posted, this is a little different than I'm used to, so bear with me. Oh, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my guy. Sure. So we have, we have a couple sections in here, and we're going to, uh, you're going to see more and more info this information as uh, it goes through, because we're going to have our lead information here, we're going to have asbestos notifications. This is going to be the clearinghouse for information. But under, under right and immediately, you have all the correspondence and presentations that we've done to date for lead. And we as well as have the, our strategy for the, the handout I just gave you. So if the public has any questions about what we're doing and how we're doing it, they can come here. What we've also put on here is we have got a live spreadsheet where folks can go in and look at the results for all the different schools and where we are with them. So, so I am, as we go through, we were, are dating, oh, this is really tough. Um, so, the room name, the room number, the location, you know, if, it, if it's, a, if it's a, this is the home ec room at, uh, or family consumer family science. Family consumer science. At uh, Main Street Middle School. Let's go back, go back to the picture of the old guy. I'll explain that. <laughs> um, you know, we've got Southwest, we've got a sink in the Southwest corner, we've got one in the Southwest corner, we've got these different. And so what we have here is we have the date that the test was taken. So we have our first draw, the date of the first draw, the date of our flush test, and the results. So we can see here, this was the drinking fountain, we, we tested fine, we don't need to test again. Again, I think the state may tell us what cycle we may want to test on, um, that hasn't been determined yet. No, that hasn't been determined. So here, I'm just going to pull this out. This is a sink in the, in the uh, family consumer science uh, classroom. So we tested, first tested on, on uh, November 2nd. Our first draw was three parts per billion. Our, our flush was less than one part per billion. On the 7th, on the January 7th, after having these discussions of where we are, we're this, at this time we were still thinking the 15, part billion, 15 parts per billion were in good shape. On the 7th, we took that fixture offline. We shut it down because it was above the, the one. We actually, on this fixture, we actually took the screen, the, fill, the aerator out of the fixture. We retested it, and it came down to two parts per billion. So these remediation steps are, are you know, that's, you kind of take the easy, you do the easy fix first. This is where we start replacing fixtures and valves. We took the aerator, got it down to one part per two or two parts per billion. On the 17th, when we got those results back, we decided that, you know, we're gonna put filters on all the, the home ec, um, family consumer science fixtures. So we installed that. We have not retested that. That is, we've installed an NSF approved filter that has a monitor on it that will, that will blink when it says the filter needs to be changed. The custodial staff has, I loaded them up with a bunch of spare filters so that fixture hasn't been, re we don't feel the need to retest that one. What is the cost so far of this work? Ballpark, a few grand. A few grand. We get about, uh, The test kits um, themselves are $12 a piece. So that's like if you're taking one first draw sample, it's $12. If you're taking a flush sample at the same tap, it would be $24. So we so yeah so it's like eighteen hundred dollars in testing, the time to run them up, 
And then the remediation work. Uh, we've replaced a bunch of fixtures. We've had the plumber come in and redo the plumbing uh, supply lines back to kind of, it was kind of cobbled together at the high school, but we've brought that back. And so three to $5,000. For a school that didn't have a huge amount of problems. For a district, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. relatively small district at that. Yeah. yeah. So what's the stick with? So that's so far. This is how this is how we've been we've been uh, doing this is sort of letting folks know when we're doing stuff, what the results are, what our next step is, and then like this this fountain, the East Drinking Fountain in the the lower level corridor. It was old. It was redundant. We took it out of service. Uh, question specifically about the middle school. Um, I've been hearing that there's not ready access to a drinking fountain in the gym or by the gym it's anymore. Broken. It's broken. Yeah, that one's, they've ordered a new one. Okay. They've ordered a new one, yeah. Great. Um, so let's let's just, so that's that's where the information is. Both of us have questions. Everything we're doing, when we're doing it, and what the step is. Uh, the state will have its own reporting matrix here soon enough that we can talk. So if we go through the district, I went through, and keeping in mind that we're still directing everyone to um, to the bottle fill stations. If we, if the state came and said three parts per billion and you decided, we as a community, whomever the decide, decision makers are, say three parts per billion, we can live with that. That's what we're going to do the district. At Roxbury, that constitutes two fixtures that we need to get in there and replace. Uh, and again, we're fortunate in that the first draw, so here's a good example. Um, this was a classroom. One of the classrooms that we tested, the bubbler came in at nine, we took it offline, we had the bubbler, we had the plumber go in and take the bubbler off. Um, we retested, we tested at the sink this time. So we're, we still have, we have a high reading at that sink. So we'll, that's, that picture needs to be taken out and replaced, probably down the valve, same thing with that one. Here, again, once we were down to that one part on the flush, that really isn't gonna change. So we didn't, re, we didn't retest flushes. If they got, if they, the flushes were below the one part per billion, we presumed that nothing was gonna change over the coming weeks, so we, we kept with that. And there's no, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. You know, we went from three parts per billion to less, to less than one part per billion. Uh, but that was actually a different sink. This was the faucet aspect of that same sink. So we've got two sinks down at Roxbury that we're gonna, we're gonna be replacing. Um, and that would get us to that three part per billion throughout the entire school. Again, if that's the standard, that's, further discussion on that one. Uh, UES, again, using that three part, we've got one down there. There's, a, there's about three other ones that we want to, to take care of to get us down to the one part per building. <clears throat> Main Street, right now, I believe that all of them are below the three. Again, we've got some that were, and then the high school is in, is in good shape. So that, here's a, another good example of the high school. So this thing, this was a brand new fixture that tested two parts per billion. We went in, we flushed it, we took the aerator out of it, we retested it two months, two months later. It was down to the one part per billion. But even though it was the one part per billion, we said, you know, these tests are a snapshot in time. We're, it's, it's a cooking, it's used for cooking, let's put a filter on it and be done with it. We're not gonna, we don't want people guessing what's what, we just want to know what it so 
I'm happy to go into more detail with people, but I think I'm probably confusing people. But the important part is that the information's there, and we're dating it, and um, we're, we're heading towards the goals on that piece. Thank you. Great, thank you. Great. Very, thank you very helpful. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Michelle. Sure, thank you. Sure. That's it. The work that you guys are doing is really good. Um, you know, this is all proactive, and there is no legislation right now requiring it, but it's really great to see schools taking it seriously and addressing issues. No, well, yeah, but that table on the website is fantastic. Very transparent and yeah, and it's really yeah. And yeah. Mike Barry was very helpful in that. Anytime I make a change in there, automatically. Updated, updated. So, it is the latest information that we have. Good. Yeah, no, thank you to everyone. Thank you. For this. It's a great thing. In terms of a plan to articulate this to the community, what, what are we thinking there? I think we're supposed to post it on Facebook. Okay. Should this go up? Sounds good. That's on the web page. Sounds good. I'm probably just making the community know that, that it's there. Um, Maybe it would help if each of the principals in their letters would note that it's there in the on the website. It's Isn't been done in each school. A link to the website in the principal email. <coughs> that yep. would be good. Yeah. Yep. There's, there's yep. the stuff. Can we tweet it out too? You can you can tweet away. I mean, can the district tweet it out? Yes. That's Mike Barry, right? Yes. And you can tweet it out. Too. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll tweet that, okay? <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> radar? What's that? Radar? We can talk a little bit about radar. It's, okay. not, it's on our agenda, so um, we've so done we, the testing. So we did testing um, at all four schools for radon as well. We had some unfortunate issues with the lab that we use where samples didn't get analyzed quickly enough. So we only have about half of the results for Union, Roxbury, and Main Street, Middle, and then we have, I don't know, just a handful from the high school. Um, but what we saw for the results that we do have for Union, Roxbury, and Main Street is that um, radon levels were down around background levels, so what radon levels are in outdoor air, which is perfect, so that's really good. Um, the few results that we have from the high school are similar. There was one room that had a result that was in the area where we would recommend considering doing some follow-up testing, um, but nothing above four picocuries per liter, which is the recommended action level for fixing a radon problem. Um, it's definitely worth trying to get the rest of the tests done um, sometimes in a school it really is just one room that has an issue. It's not necessarily building wide. Um, so it's good to have a full set of results and we're working on what the best plan is to go about um, finishing that up so you guys can have a full set of results. But what we're seeing so far is looking good. And yeah, we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll, I'll work with Mike to, to make this make this information a little easier for people to find and we'll start breaking these down into subcategories so they can also we'll have the radon testing we'll let we'll discuss this and like I say all the reporting stuff that, that needs to take place hopefully we can have there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And don't be uh, don't be shy about questions or if anyone has any questions. Michelle's been fabulous, absolutely helpful in working getting us through this. Um, so we're happy to we're happy to answer the best we can. Yeah, yeah no, we appreciate it. It's some important stuff. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm. uh, so our third reading of the equity policy is up next. Um, I know Andrew has at least one. I, I do, but I think it's resolved now by the clean copy because I was looking at a copy that was like two or three times ago. Okay. And there was something. Is the one that Brian and I were yeah, doing. and looking at it at the beginning of this, which I, I unfortunately didn't have a chance to look at the clean version before, um, but I did read the 
the dirty version, if you will, uh, <laughs> for like the fifth or sixth time. And I just, I just want to clarify something, but I think that this is clarified. Seeing it in this format, it, it seems very clear. Um, with regard to the assessment under ex expectations for district administration, the language about the district will systematically gather and use data disaggregated by race, ethnicity, language, et cetera. Is the intent of that so that we can collect data based on these um, demographic fields to uh, ensure that we're meeting our goals within the uh, equity policy? Is that the is that the aim of that? Yes, I would say that was the original intention. Because yeah. here here it seems clear that that is it, and it, and there was something. I, I think there might have been something in an old one. I don't know what it was. I, I don't want to misspeak. But there was something that threw me off and made me think that the language was doing the contrary of that. And I was concerned that if we didn't have that type of data, there wouldn't be a way for us to evaluate and hold ourselves, the district, um, accountable with this policy. So, but seeing it clean like this, I don't have that same concern anymore. So. Okay, perfect. Um, any other comments or questions? And thanks again, uh, policy I, committee. For I would say we didn't catch it before it came out this time, but there was a slight grammatical change. The second paragraph, um, oh, yeah. the description. There's that. the there's one sentence that is in italics, that the italics should be removed. Um, it, students should not bear that burden yeah. as italicized. Sorry, totally yeah. mine. Yeah, like I said. I did not get anything back from the students on this, so I think that they were fine with as written. Or really busy. Mm -hmm. It went out a few different ways. So, so it can be worn for adoption. Mm -hmm. Great. Another yeah, comment? Will, uh, no, except great job. Yeah, yeah great job. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, students. Mm -hmm. We don't have. I'm really glad the students are in the academic year, right? The they're not on the same the election cycle that we are, right? Forward with this. I think it's really right. So yeah. they're just not here tonight. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. They were busy. I thought they started in the fall, but. We used to be able to find bits of it and just dispersed in other policies, but it, it's. Yeah. yeah. It makes a better statement. That's it. Which one? So what do we do? Do we have to. Approve this, and then it waits ten days, and then we. We don't have to. We don't have to. Do we don't have to take a vote now. But, but it has we to do have to. Like, we, seem, we seem to have consensus that we will approve it next time. So yeah. it needs to be warned. Warned. Yeah. Okay. Sure that is next time. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Should it be on the consent agenda, or do yep. we just? Yeah, we put yep. on the consent agenda. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the next item is. Um, <coughs> Executive session for the evaluation of personnel. So is it? There's no negotiation. For that? Yeah, I feel like oh, we, we, we should probably put like update on status. Like yep. Five yep. minutes of negotiation. Oh, you know, there's one other item I want to add. Or, um, with the change to the way the healthcare is bargained, um, there's been a deal worked out where every uh, school district or SU district gets a vote through the BSBA to approve the deal. So we need a rep um, as part of, of that. So we need a, a BSBA rep who would basically monitor uh, you know, the talks and figure out what's going on and then vote whether or not we want to approve that statewide um, health care agreement. Could it's we not, not just floor. Like we have to send someone from our board. We can't just. Yep. So where is this occurring? Yeah, every every SU and school district gets one vote. Okay. Part of that. Um, so wait, we get one vote to decide how the BSBA votes, 
or? I think so. So it's so yeah. we're, the voting. we're ratifying vote. whatever. The, the team, we're voting yeah. to, to, tell them to, tell them to tell them how to vote. So do you have and any clarity on what that means? Does that mean, yeah. as Andrew was just saying, show up at one meeting to, to and have monitored it ahead of time, or does this show up for 50 meetings along you the way? To, you want me to read the request? Yeah, yes, I've, please. From memory, it didn't seem. <clears throat> Under the process approved at the 2018 VSBA annual meeting, each SU slash SD has the ability to cast one vote to ratify the agreement reached by the statewide health care bargaining commission. Ratify so, the agreement, that sounds like an after vote. It tells, yeah, it so it's instructing this board, please be sure to add appointment of the SD's voting delegate for statewide health insurance to the first meeting of your SD board as the ratification process requires each SD to notify the VSBA of the name, telephone number, and email address of its voting delegate by April 1st. If the commission enters into an agreement, the VSBA will hope an host an informational webinar for the voting delegates within 10, dele 10, 10 calendar days after execution of the agreement. Within 10 calendar days after the inf informational webinar, the VSBA shall conduct an electronic ballot. So it sounds like it's pretty, it sounds like it can be a pretty light lift. It's um, like they make an agreement, we watch a webinar. And then you electronically vote. Assume that and I'll is do it, it, I'll do it. Yeah. And is it passed if the majority of people vote yes? What's the voting process? Like. My guess is that that is probably, we probably obtain that information. We don't have it right now. But we will also, I would um, assume, have to have a board meeting after the webinar, between the webinar and the vote. That, so that, that, yeah. that was my question. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. He's <laughs> yeah, a representative yeah. of the board. He's I not think, I think independently. he has to come tell us what he learned yeah. in the webinar and then. And we so we could do an ad hoc, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. web web based meeting. Yeah, we could all we could all meet somewhere and watch the webinar. You never yeah. know. That's what we're doing too. Yeah. No, you don't know the timeline on this. Yeah. So. Okay. Should we have an alternate? Just like say, for example, or do, we can just cross that bridge when we come to it. But say, for example, it happened to come when you were in Bermuda or something. Right. I I I don't have any big. Yeah, we can probably, if, if you're not going to be there, you can let us know. And we'll, yeah. We can appoint an alternate at a later time. But, um, I think the, the important thing right now is getting the contact information to yeah. the VSBA before the April 1 deadline and to the this meeting or the next meeting. So. I'll do it. As the other board member on the negotiations committee who isn't a parliament, the parliamentarian and isn't on a third committee, <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I, I move that the board appoint uh, Andrew SR. Voting delegate? It's going to be a healthcare we'll, we'll ratification. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, second that. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, now, executive session. And so <laughs> you want us to add yeah. negotiations? So we need a motion to enter executive session to discuss. Mm -hmm. So we need a that I, I move that we find that discussing negotiations in public would put the district at a substantial disadvantage. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. I move that we go into an executive session for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations and evaluation of personnel. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. So, so is that like boilerplate language?